Hi, my name is Chelsea and I'm an analytics specialist solutions architect and joining me is Lucy. Hey everyone, my name is Lucy and I was previously a generalist solutions architect at AWS. Right. And today we'll be answering one of the most asked questions, which is what is the difference between a specialist solutions architect and a generalist solutions architect and which one is right for you? So Lucy, tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a generalist solutions architect. As a generalist solutions architect, we typically need to have a broad understanding of most of the common AWS services. There's over 200 services available on, in AWS, but there are typically some common patterns. For example, I was working with customers who a lot of them were focused on having a 3T web application moved onto the cloud, or they wanted to analyze their data using QuickSight, for example. So I think as a general solutions architect, what I did was I helped these customers by using my knowledge and experience of AWS. All right. So Chelsea, what do you do as a specialist solutions architect? Yes, thanks Lucy, that's a very good question. So as a specialist solutions architect, we leverage our deep domain expertise in a particular area to aid generalist solutions architects and answer questions. So for example, I'm an analytics solutions architect and I have to come in to answer and dive into questions that are related to data. I would ask, what are some of the data formats you're using? How much data are you ingesting? What kind of services are you using? Are you on-prem? Are you hybrid? Are you already on the cloud? Uh, so. We also do discovery, but we focus more on their analytics pipeline and how that looks like because it requires a lot of diving deep before you can suggest a solution. We typically want to work backwards from the business problem. And this is a skill that we did not learn as much in college. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think business acumen is a very important part of being a solutions architect, mm -hmm. but speaking more towards the technical skills, I think what I usually recommend is people have a broad understanding of the IT domains. Mm -hmm. For example, networking, compute, storage, databases and security, mm -hmm. trying to understand the IT fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And then if they're interested in the solutions architect role or looking to build their tech skills, getting an AWS certification will be good because it maps out like a learning plan on how you can you know, learn the different services offered by AWS and learn about some core concepts like, for example, auto scaling or like, you know, uh, multi multiple availability zones. For specialist solutions architect, especially when you are coming in as an industry hire, you can read the job requirements and they typically require that you have experience in Apache Hadoop, Spark, Hive Metastore. And of course, you have to have deep understanding as well as all, all the topics that Lucy pointed out. Both Chelsea and I, we started our careers pretty much uh, quite early on in our career as solutions architects. And we did this through a program called the AWS TechU program. So you might see advice out there in that solutions architect role might not necessarily be entry level. But nowadays, companies like AWS, they have internships, they have graduate programs to make it more accessible for people to start their career in the cloud and more specifically as a solutions architect. So that would be my advice upskill, get hands-on, and look for entry-level positions if you're interested in becoming a solutions architect. So overall, we believe that you won't go wrong with either a specialist solutions architect or a general solutions architect. Your career growth is exponential. You can become a consultant, you can become a product manager, since you're always interfacing with the engineering and product teams, it's us a little bit about what are some of the transitions that you've seen or like career growth opportunities for SAEs. Mm, yeah, definitely. And you're a perfect example, right? So you started off in the Techie program mm -hmm. more towards a general solutions architect, mm -hmm. and then you make the transition to becoming a specialist solutions architect. I've seen a lot of people do the same. Um, so the career transition usually I think is quite straightforward internally because people usually are quite willing to help if they see that you're interested in a particular area and you want to become a specialist in that area. Usually I think people will stay one to two years in the generalist role and once they see an area of technology or a specific industry that sparks their knowledge, for example AI ML, then they can try and make the transition into the team. Mm -hmm. So Chelsea, what advice would you give to an aspiring analytics solutions architect? I would suggest reading more than just internal documentation. For example, this is one of my favorite books. It's called 
data engineering with AWS gives you all of the fundamental skill sets that you would need to develop your pipelines on AWS. And second, I would recommend shadowing as much as you can. Well, data engineering fundamentals is crucial. And for programming languages, I recommend starting with Python and SQL. Also, you need to understand how to orchestrate data workflows. So for example, Apache Airflow is a very good tool that you can use to integrate with AWS services and of course, third-party services as well. And secondly, data warehousing. Data lake is important. You want to be able to ingest not just structured data, but unstructured data. So that would be all of the fundamental skills that I would recommend if you are keen on starting in this role. Let us know in the comments below if you are deciding to pursue one of these roles.